Welcome to the Butterfly Effect. I'm Chris Horner. This is stage 18 of the Vuelta a España. This is going to be an amazing stage and go ahead and turn this off and just watch it live because every bit of kilometer that was shown on today's race is exciting all the way to the finish of today's stage. Now the cameras will come on with about 85 kilometers to go, but I want you to look at the profile real quick because with 90 kilometers to go are when the last three mountains start on today's stage. Now they're going to finish with two category one climbs and the last climb is going to be 13 and a half kilometers, about five and a half percent, but it's going to have some pitches at 11% of course, because it's never averaged all the way through. And there's going to be a climb, almost identical climb before that going up the same part of the mountain, just a little bit different course coming from one side and finishing up the other side. So today's stage, like I said, fast and furious. When the cameras come on, there's going to be action all over the place because we're going to see 40 guys thereabouts in the front group and all of the top 10 guys are represented up there with teammates. Quick Step have teammates up there. Movistar have teammates up there with Carlos Verona. When we start looking at UAE Team Emirates, they got two guys up there. Mark Soler's up there. Evo Oliveira's up there. And then when we start looking at the other teams, when we're talking AG2R, they're represented. Bora Hansgrohe's got guys up there. I mean, everybody's got guys in this big group of 40. We go back and we see the rider chasing. It's Almeida chasing. He's got his teammate with him, Brandon McNulty, the American who finished the Tour de France and rode in big time support for Tade Pogacar at the last two Tour de France's. And those two guys are trying to bridge the gap, but the gap is just about five minutes to these two riders. Then we go back to the Peloton. We see Quick Step on the front. The gap's around six minutes back there for Quick Step, and they're pulling on the front. Now, before the cameras came on, though, there was a crash that's highlighted later. And who was caught up in the crash? It was Jay Vine, the KOM jersey wearer, who pretty much looked like he had this KOM wrapped up for Albacine de Kunic. He's down. Quick step lost Vervaki in there. So that means one big climber guy for the race, for the race leader's red jersey. Remco Abnapol went down in that crash. So we don't see him throughout the finishing of this 85 kilometers of this today's stage. But when we look back, we see there's Jumbo Visma guys that are caught up in that crash too. So there's chaos all over. And especially when you start looking at Enos because Carlos Rodriguez went down. Now, Carlos Rodriguez was sitting fourth on the general classification. And when we finally get to see some pictures of Carlos Rodriguez, he's ripped up, tore up all over the place. There's basically barely any jersey left on this man from front to back, elbows, legs, everything's covered. So Carlos had a rough accident here before the cameras came up. Now we see with everybody chasing everybody here, we're going to go up this first categorized climb with three left here to go. And once they summit, Richard Carapaz is going to pick up maximum KOM points as he goes over the top with what's a massive size break. We look further down the mountain and we see it's Almeida going solo now because he lost Brandon McNulty. So he's done this whole climb on his own. But at the top of the climb, he'll have the teammate waiting for him, Evo Oliveira, who now will get on the front and start setting some massive tempo. We go further back down to that climb for the Peloton, who hasn't crest the KOM yet. It's us. Astana on the front for Lopez. Now Astana's got about four teammates with him driving the front because we got a GC battle happening with Almeida going up the road who was sixth on the general classification and Lopez was fifth. So Astana want to protect their lead. Remember, even Astana have a rider up in that front group though because they got Vincenzo Nibali, the four-time Grand Tour winner who's retiring at the end of this season who's up there representing Astana in that front group and we'll call it about 40 guys because it's massive. Now we start going down the valley and we see Evo Olive Vera is just dicing up through the corners. He's pulling 100% for Almeida, the Portuguese rider on his wheel. Behind it's still Astana back there pulling full gas. And up front, when we start the penultimate climb here on stage 18 of the Vuelta Espana, we start seeing the first attack come from Hugh Carthy. Won't be too long before he has some company because he's going to get Sergio Aguita up there with him and Thibaut Pinot. Now just behind Chase and is going to be Yambo Visma's guessing. Robert Hessink is up there and he's going full gas trying to get across the gap and he's got one rider for company because he's got Ellie Gers Bear. Just behind that duel, we see Richard Carapaz from Team Enos trying to bridge across. Now, Richard Carapaz will ca catch the two in front from Yumbo Visma and Arkea Samsic and those three will bridge up 
to the three up front being led by Hugh Carthy for Richard Carapaz to cross the KOM on today's stage 18 getting maximum points solidly putting him in the lead for the KOM jersey because Jay Vine has exited the race left in the ambulance earlier in that crash that I told you about. Now, behind, what's happening? Oliveira pulled off at the start of this penultimate climb here, so Almeida was on his own for about the first 10 kilometers of the penultimate climb, and then with about two or three kilometers from the summit, Soler dropped back, and he hooked up there with Almeida, and now Soler's pulling 100% for his Portuguese leader. Now we go over the top, and we see at the top of the KOM there for the two UAE riders, and right there in the picture, it's going to be the Italian rider, Vincenzo Nibali for Astana. They're pulling him out of the front group because behind, they need help back there. Lopez is left almost on his own. Movistar was doing a little bit of pulling, but now we're going to see with Astana going back there with Vincenzo Nibali that Vincenzo Nibali is going to get on the front and start pulling hard. Only problem is, is Enos are having some difficulty when they're going over the penultimate KOM because it's split back there from the pace of the Movistar team. That's St. Carlos Rodriguez who crashed hard out the back. Luckily for Carlos Rodriguez, though, he's got one teammate and his teammate Ben Turner is putting on a show. Ben is delivering the goods and he's going to pull this group back up to the group of about 10, 12 riders up there with the GC favorites all locked in there. Movistar pulling hard. Astana, like I said, has brought back Vincenzo Nibali. But with Carlos Rodriguez chasing hard, they're going to bring back one important helper up there for Remco Evnipol. Because in that front group, Remco Evnipol was completely isolated on his own with no teammates because Van Wilder was dropped with Carlos Rodriguez. Now, Ben Turner, like I said, on fabulous form, he'll close that gap and get his race leader up here, fourth on the general classification, Carlos Rodriguez, back up to the GC group. We start the descent, and we got chasers following chasers, and it's just happening on today's stage. Six riders up front. They're pulling hard, but not hard enough because they're losing time to just one rider in the back. Solaire, Mark Solaire, who's bombing down the descent, putting on a dominating display. They're about two minutes, 45 seconds behind the group of six up front, and they pretty much have whoever's been dropped out of that front group on the wheel there of Solaire and Almeida. We go further back, and now it's Astana's Vincenzo Nick. I believe four-time Grand Tour winner back there putting on a show, dropping down, putting all his descending skills to work as we see him going through that left turn. And up front, Soler's doing the same thing, bombing down the descent up in the group of six. Now we're starting to go through the valley. These guys are losing time. I mean, they're just shedding time to just one rider pulling in each group in the back because Soler's putting on a show, like I said. And when we go further back, you know, we all know Vincenzo Nibali can bomb down the descent. So he's going full gas through the valley. Now we're coming up to the last climb with about 13 kilometers to go. Solera lead into it. He had a little bit of help from Bahrain Victorious pulling on the front because they have Gino Mater in that group back there and they want to get back up to this group of six in front. Now the group of six, when they came into the front, the first attack early in this in the final climb here with 13 kilometers to go, probably attacking with about 12 and a half is Ellie Jair's bear from Arkea Samsic. Now he puts in the first big acceleration in the first group of six. And then when we go further back, we see that it's Mark Soler pulling off the front. That means it's time for Almeida, the Portuguese rider, to go to work again. This kid has been putting on a show since 85 kilometers ago. He was with Brandon McNulty first. Then he blew, was on his own. Then he was with Evo Oliveira, who worked all the way tirelessly through the descents and the valleys that dropped him off on the next climb. Then he was solo again. Then he caught up with Soler. Now Soler's pulled off, and it's time for Almeida on the front. So Almeida's going full gas. He's got a host of riders on his wheel. Bahrain victorious, Gino Mater will do a little bit of help up there with Almeida, but it's not going to be enough because they're just not gaining time on that group of six up front with the solo rider, Ellie Jair's Bear, going. Now we go back down to the GC battle because when we look at all of the favorites on the general classification, Bar Almeida, who's up the road, they're coming into this climb. We look at the back there of the GC favors. Carlos Rodriguez is way back when they start this climb because there's about 20 guys left in the race. And we see the Enos rider back there, but he does have Ben Tuner with him. Now those two are come and start to climb at the back. And then we start seeing some action as the race really starts getting hot and heavy. 
With 10 kilometers to go, the first big attack is going to come from Moss. Moss throws in attack. The only problem is he didn't time it too well. He's throwing in attack with about 10k to go just as they're going through the feed zone. So he's going to have to back off the gas a little bit. Started from too far back to begin with, with his teammate on the front. Came up to the front, realizes the feed zone. Last chance to grab a bottle. So what does Moss do? Swings over to the right side of the road, grabs a bottle, then stuffs it down in his water bottle cage and starts his next acceleration and big attack here. Uh, with 10 kilometers to go on stage 18 of the Vuelta Espana. With that attack, he's got Remco Avnapol with him, and those two will hesitate a bit, and then the group will come back together. Now, we start getting a little bit further up, and the next attack's going to come from Ben O'Connor, AG2R, and he's got his teammate up there. So, Nons Peters is coming back. Same time Nons Peters is coming back. Movistar's Carlos Verona is coming back. Those two riders are going to fight for who can ride on the front the most. Now, Carlos Verona is riding for Movistar, Star Nons Peters riding for AG2R, and he's got Ben O'Connor in this group. The Movie Star rider of a runner, though, wants to get on the front. Sometimes this is what happens when you come out of the group. You just want to do some big, big work so you can say you did your job for your team and you want the pride of doing the work for your team. The only problem is Carlos Verona's pulling on the front, he's pulling this group away from Moss and Remco having to pull back there, but Moss is his teammate. So now they got a gap there. We look, it's the quick step rider that's coming back that was in the front up there, Fausto Masnada. He starts coming from the back of there of the GC train. He wants to go to the front so he can start setting some tempo to bring Remco having to pull back up to that AG2R duo up there that's being led by Movistar without their leader. Now we see Fausto Masnada, he does basically about the same thing as the movie star writer up front, Carlos Verona, is doing because he leaves his race leader in the red jersey. Nonetheless, Remco Abdepol and gaps him off. Now he realizes it, sits up, looks back, and realizes he's got to come back. At the same point in time, Carlos Verona has realized that, hey, I don't have Enric Moss with me. I got to sit up too. So Carlos Verona drops out of that group with the AG2R duo up there. Ben O'Connor, that's the threat on the general classification. Now Remco Avnipol's had enough. He's going to throw in a massive acceleration and it was beautiful to watch on the pedals. He is driving it. Goes straight across to Ben O'Connor's group and then straight through these guys, straight through the front. Now, let's just back the film up just a little bit because Enric Moss tried to go, and as he's going, Verona, who dropped out of that group, comes back, and you see him wave his hand to his hip. That means hop onto the hip, buddy. I can close this gap for you. When I'm sitting on the couch, I was like, I don't know, Carlos Verona. I don't know if you can close this gap up to Remco Avdepol, who just went up to that group that you dropped out of and blew by these guys. Now, Ben O'Connor's up there locked on the Remco Avdepol wheel, and finally, Remco Avdepol just back off the throttle a little bit, and about a K after chasing, Carlos Verona will get on with Enric Moss and bring him back up to the front group. Now, eventually, everything will come back together up front. With the exception, we'll see it's Carlos Rodriguez back there from Inos. He's got Lopez with him, and they're in trouble because Ayuso is back there too. Now, this is the time. I told you Ben Turner had some good legs, and Ben Turner goes to the front because he's trying to throw down. He's trying to salvage Inos's general classification. Helps here. He goes to the front and starts pulling, takes him about a K, K and a half. That'll get him just under six kilometers to go. As we see, it's our, a Ben Turner pulling the group back up with Carlos Rodriguez to bring all the GC favorite guys up to the front. Now, let's go to the, the actual stage battle that's going on. Or were we looking at the stage battle? I don't know because the time gap is at about a minute, minute and 25 seconds. But what happened with Ellie Jair's Bears' first attack we look back, guessing caught him with about nine kilometers to go. And then with six and a half kilometers to go, as we were seeing the battle back there from Ben Turner trying to bring up Carlos Rodriguez to that front group, all of a sudden, Gassink had thrown in his attack on Eligier's bear from Arkea Samson. Now, Gassink is throwing down, but his gap's only about 40 seconds at this point in time in the race, and we still got about six kilometers to go. Gassink's throwing down hard. As I told you, there was attacks happening left and right amongst the GC guys, but it's all back together more or less at this point in time in the race. And all of a sudden, it's Verona back on the front and setting tempo for Moss, and it's going to be about four, four and a half kilometers when Verona's going to throw in a massive accelerations because he's trying to launch another attack from Enric Moss. Verona pulls off, launches 
Enric Moss full gas here with just a few kilometers to go on today's stage. Ramco Evna pulls locked on, and then they play a little bit of cat and mouse. They'll slow down. The group will come all back together with just under two kilometers to go. Now, there were some attacks from EF Education in between that section with Rigoberto around trying to make some action happen on today's stage and get up to guessing solo, but that move got brought back too. So now we're under two kilometers to go. Everything is back together, and all of a sudden we're going to see some action start to happen because with one kilometer to go, Enric Moss, Movistar, throws in another attack. Guys, I probably gave you three or four different attacks from, in, from Enric Moss, but he probably had ten on today's stage. So like I said, you should have watched the whole stage. With one kilometer to go, Moss is throwing down hard. He's got Remco M to pull locked on his wheel. Lopez is there from Astana putting on a stellar ride. Remember, his team has rode throughout today's stage trying to bring back Almeida who got caught with about 6k to go. Now all of a sudden we see it's out Lopez holding on for dear life, but the gap is stretching. We look back at the picture. Lopez is looking over his shoulder. Ben O'Connor is further back looking over his shoulder. Both riders are looking for some help, but there's gaps everywhere because Enric Moss is going full gas up front with that 1k to go when we saw the attack from Enric Moss. It was guessing up there and guessing's gaps down to about 20 seconds. So with 1k to go, guessing could still get caught and lose today's stage 18 to the GC favorites back there. They're going full gas. Now Moss realizes he's got good legs and he keeps accelerating. All of a sudden, Lopez can't hold the pace. He drops off with about 800 meters to go. As Lopez is dropping off, we see all of a sudden in sight at 700 meters to go. It's Guessing and Guessing knows he's in trouble because he's got Enric Moss and Remco Evnepoel coming. Now, with about 600 meters to go, Guessing's looking underneath his armpit. He realizes they're right on his back wheel. He pulls for about another two, 300 meters to go as, as Remco Evnepoel and Moss are sitting on this wheel. At this point in time, Guessing has no other choice. If he wants a podium finish, he's just got to keep the pace going high and hope these guys are just done in the legs from the tax all the way up to 12 kilometers so far on this final climb. Now we're coming in to the last 500 meters to go. Guessing still on the front. He looks like he's blown, but he's throwing everything, everything he's got into trying to win today's stage as he's got the two best ranked riders at this year's Vuelta Espana on his wheel with 200 meters to go. Coming from the third position, Remco Evnepoel starts his attack, throws up the right side, passes in, Rick Moss comes right by guessing as they're coming through the final bend and then with 25 meters to go, Remco Evnepoel looks back, knows he's got today's stage 18 won and celebrates as he crosses the line for another stage victory here at the Vuelta Espana to give him two stage victories in 2022 at the Vuelta and of course he's been wearing the red race leader's jersey here at the Tour of Spain. Now we look back, Enric Moss certainly had enough to come around guessing for second on the stage. Hessink will cross the line to round out the podium here for third. Then when we look further back, just a little bit of gap to all the GC favorites that are the line. About 15 seconds down on Remco Evnepoel. The big, big loser on today's stage crossing the line with Richard Carapaz, who got the call on the radio as they were getting caught by the attackers. He dropped back pulled Carlos Rodriguez to the finish of today's stage, but he will lose his fourth place on the general classification because of that one minute, 20 second gap to Remco Evnepoel's time up front. Now with that, when we start looking at the top 10 in general classification, it didn't shuffle a ton considering how much action was happening on today's stage. Like I said, fourth place, Carlos Rodriguez dropped to fifth, and then Lopez jumped up to fourth for Astana. So Astana rode all day and gained some on today's stage for the general classification. But other than that, with all of the battles, and guys, there's 100 attacks coming up the last 13 kilometers of today's stage. So if you don't have time to watch the whole 85K, I understand people got jobs and stuff. Watch the last 15K, and that'll be enough to to at least let you realize how much action today's stage was here at the Vuelta Espana as we saw another magnificent stage and a magnificent display by Remco Evnepoel who was putting on a show of dominance going all the way up the climb. Enric Moss too, I'm going to give you props because that was probably 10, 15 different attacks in, in 13 kilometers on today's stage because I'm sure there was more than what we got to actually watch when the cameras were on you guys. Spectacular finish. Been amazing stage. We lost, of course, Primoz Roglic out of the stage two days ago, but the action is still thick and heavy here at the Vuelta Espana, so make sure you like and subscribe. 
Two more big mountain stages left with stages 19 and 20 left. Big, big mountain stage on stage 20. But tomorrow's stage with the two climbs finishing still a long ways before the finish of the stage and with quick step, how much more are they hurt? Remember today's stage, Remco Avnipol was magnificent. No doubt about that. But when you really want to look at the quick step team, they might be in trouble, right? What happens if Astana don't chase? Now, I know sitting up here on the podium, one of the teams inside the top 10 always seem to chase when there's a threat on the general classification. But what happens if Astana didn't chase today? Remember, Remco Evnipol going over that KOM with just about 50 kilometers to go in today's stage. He was isolated in that front group of 10 or 12 riders of GC favors. Didn't have Van Wilder with him. Only had Masnada in that front group that he could have pulled back. And we know Masnada's not climbing fantastic. Vervaki crashed in the stage today. So will he be good on tomorrow's stage? Because if Vervaki had a real bad crash on today's stage and he's not good on tomorrow's stage, we could see going over that last climb on tomorrow's stage 19 with Ramco Evnipol isolated against 15, maybe 20 riders up there. And that's why I highlighted it on Beyond the Coverage of being such a dangerous stage. Of course, I thought it would be Primoz Roglic going up to Jumbo Visma's Rowan Dennis possibly making the big threat. But now you still got to look at it. today. Remco Avnipol was isolated from a long ways out. So he could be in trouble on tomorrow's stage 19 if Quick Step don't ride that stage intelligently. Make sure you guys like and subscribe because there's more action to come here on the Butterfly Effect. And I'll see you real soon.